ان الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ارسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار نقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد نقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن ان بعض الظن اثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغضب بعضكم بعضا ايحب احدكم ان ياكل لحم اخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله ان الله تواب رحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين In Surah Al-Hujurat, the 49th Surah of the Qur'an, there are a list of timeless Muslim morals, Muslim principles, that if we abide by them, it teaches us how to live together as a healthy society. And these principles aren't just about how Muslims are supposed to treat each other, but also the way we deal with all of humanity, how we're supposed to be with the people around us also. Each one of them is probably the subject of a khutbah on its own. Which is why instead of giving you the entire list and walking you through all of those principles with it, which inshallah ta'ala encourage you to read and think about on your own, again surah number 49, from beginning to end, just ponder upon the surah and really think about what it means for you as a Muslim. I just wanted to highlight one, not even a whole ayah, one expression from within one ayah. And the expression that this khutbah is dedicated to is the expression, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu jtanibu kathiran min al-dhan. This is all I'm going to be talking to you about today. Roughly translated, the ayah says, those of you who claim to believe, avoid, circumvent, or stay, stay uh, away as much as possible, and a great deal from making assumptions of one. No doubt after assumption comes sin. This is a rough translation of what the ayah says. So let's explore what it's saying at a little, little bit of a deeper level, inshallah. First and foremost, I want to tell you that the ayah right before talks about us not making fun of other people. It's not okay for you and me to make fun of one group, another group. If you notice, for instance, the popular comedy industry, you know, stand-up comedians or cartoons that are comical in nature or shows that are comedy in nature, they'll try to make fun of a particular ethnicity a certain way. They'll stereotype something that's funny about the Arab, or they'll stereotype something that's funny about the Mexican, or something that's funny about the black guy, or the white guy, or the Asian guy, or the I Indian guy. And they'll, they'll have these stereotypes and you know they'll mock the way they speak, or they'll mock the way they dress, or mock the way they eat, and everybody gets a laugh out of it. Well, this is the ayah that says, that brand of comedy is no good. You shouldn't do this. It is not something that breeds respect for other people in a culture. It actually breeds this idea of intolerance and looking at other people as something to laugh at or beneath you and yourself as superior. But again, that's not my topic today. The topic is the one about assumptions. But I'm telling you that assumptions come as a result of that kind of comedy. Once it just starts, I'm just making a joke, but I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. And you do enough of that and you know what? It starts sinking in your head that those people are like that. So it starts off as jokes, but eventually just becomes a conviction. You're convinced that those people that you've been making fun of for so long are exactly the way the jokes say they are. You know? They're exactly the way the jokes say they are. And by the way, this is not just, again I say, not just about ethnicities. It's also about religions. It's also about people of different faiths. Like, you know, a lot of, for example, Indo-Pakis make love making fun of Hindus or Sikhs. There's a lot of Sikh jokes. You know? That's unacceptable. 
And it's national too, like, you know, Bangladeshis can have Pakistani jokes and Pakistanis can have Bangladeshi jokes. And it's funny. It's funny to them. But you know what? When you, you think it's just a joke, but eventually it becomes a stereotype and a kind of bigotry that's accepted in a society. It just becomes acceptable to them. And they end up violating every time they make a joke like that. They, and you know, they, they, they reinforce that stereotype. So when they look at a person from a different ethnicity, and even the thought crosses their mind, a judgment passes in their head, even that becomes an evil thing to do. Because you don't find in the Qur'an, this is what's remarkable about this ayah, you don't find in the Qur'an us being reprimanded for thinking. You may have learned before that, you know, actions we will be answerable for. If you thought about something, it was some bad thought that came in your head, but you didn't act on it. You didn't act on it, it was just a thought that came in your head then you're still okay. But you know what, there's a, there's a few exceptions to that. For example, intentions are a thought. And even though your action may be good if your intention's corrupt, that thought can dictate how that action counts. And another interesting and remarkable and unique exception to that is this ayah. <laughs> you know, Allah says, stay as much as, as possible away from this concept of fun, which right now in a coarse translation, I'm translating as making assumptions. But the idea of making assumptions is just something that's going on in your head. You didn't say anything. You didn't do anything. And even that am I saying, don't even think like that. You see? That was a very, very strange ayah in that the previous ayah said, don't make fun of people. Well, that's understandable. That's actually saying something, doing something. It's an action. The next ayah, or even later on in this ayah, don't spy on people. Don't backbite against people. Right? Those are actions that people do. They spy against one another. They try to dig up dirt against one another. Don't do that stuff. Fine. But here we're being taught to change the way we think. And this is critical. We're learning something very powerful about this process. If you don't change the way people think, if you don't change the way you think and I think, then things are not going to get better. Things are going to get worse. Actually, the crimes that Allah mentions after that, Ghiba, backbiting that you've heard many times about, spying on one another, not trusting each other. That all of that actually begins with a certain kind of thinking. It starts with a certain kind of thinking. And Allah says, stay as much as possible away from that kind of thinking. So let's begin with that a little now, inshallah. That was just an introductory commentary about Ijtanibu, Kathiyama bin Allah. Now let's talk let's take the word ijtinab first. Ijtinab originally comes from the word jamb in Arabic, which actually means the side of something. Okay, so you know when people lie down on their sides, they're lying on their sides. When you're traveling on a plane, or we don't have much public transportation in, in Dallas, but if we did and you're sitting in a subway or you're sitting on a bus or something, there's a person next to you, the wasahibi bin jam. There's a person sitting next to you. Or you're sitting in a waiting room at a hotel, or you know, in a lobby, or in a hospital, or a doctor's office, or something, and the person sitting next to you, this is Sahib bil Jam, because they're sitting right by your side. Now, from it gets comes an interesting verb, al ijtinab, which means to avoid something that is right next to you. It actually literally means avoidance. But what? How does it mean avoidance? It's not just to avoid something that is far away, but it's actually right next to you. So you're in danger of being contaminated by it. So you have to go out of your way to get away from it. What we're learning then is, the idea of making assumptions about people is inevitable. It's always there. It's always right next to you. It's not something you say, well, I don't judge people, man. I don't judge people. I'm not like that. Actually, it's always there. And the ifti'al form, ijtinab form, actually in the Arabic language suggests you have to make an effort to do it. It doesn't come naturally. When you put something in ifti'al, it doesn't come naturally. It's not just something you just do without even thinking about it. It takes effort. So it doesn't matter that you haven't done it before, you still have to make an effort not to do it now. It's not something that becomes passive. It's not like that, it's not like breathing, it's not passive. So ijtanibu means whatever Allah is telling us to stay away from, you gotta have an active mind, and you have to be vigilant, and you have to realize that you're always going to be in the danger of making that mistake. Nobody can assume that they're self-righteous enough, they're pure enough that they won't fall into this mistake. Had that not been a danger, Allah Azza wa could have very easily told us not to hunnu. That's a simple amr. The best kind of speech is when you say less, don't make assumptions, not to hunnu. You know? Don't make assumptions about each other. The language is done. 
But he says, اجتنبوا كثيرا من الله. This is actually an اطالة في الكلام البلاغة. They say, you extended the speech. You said a lot more than just don't make assumptions. Stay away from it because it's always going to be right next to you. Then he adds the word كثيرا. كثيرا. Which is also strange. When Ibrahim alayhi salam makes dua, وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّا أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ He doesn't add the word كَثِيرًا Prevent me and my children from worshipping idols. He doesn't say وَجْنُبْنِي كَثِيرًا He doesn't say that. وَجْتَنِبُ التَّعْهُودِ يَأْمُرُنَا سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَجْتَنِبُ التَّعْهُودِ لَمْ يَقُلْ وَجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا التَّعْهُودِ He says, اجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا And even there, وَجْتَنِبُوا He said, التَّعْهُود not مِنَ التَّعْهُود and here he says, Min al which actually adds a tab'id, it's even further. Meaning it's so close to you, you gotta push it away from you. And you gotta do it a lot. In other words, virtually every conversation you and I have, has the possibility of us making assumptions about someone. You've gotta think about this a lot. I've gotta become very conscious of this, if we're gonna live by this. So how do you, how do, and, and before I talk about how do we avoid it, let's at least deal with the word van a little bit. What does one mean? Where does it come from in the Arabic language? It's called from Lughatul Afdal, it's from the language of opposites. In other words, it means to make assumptions about something. Obviously, when you make assumptions about something, you don't know for sure. You know? You don't really know what you're talking about. But, Lan also means that your assumption grows to the point where now you are absolutely convinced of something. It actually means both of those things. That's why in the positive sense, you find it in the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ يَغُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَا قُرَبِّهِمْ يعني يُقِنُونَ They are absolutely convinced that they're going to be meeting with their master. That's a kind of conviction. Before Iman, they had an assumption. Am I going to meet Allah or not? I don't know, there's a thought. After Iman, it became firm one. It became conviction. So الَّذِينَ يَغُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَا قُرَبِّهِمْ Right? But on the other hand, there are people who say things. They just say, we're not going to be raised after we die. You know? وَمَا يُبْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهَرِ وَمَا لَهُمْ بِذَلِكَ مِنْ عِلْمِ إِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ They say, we're not going to be raised after we die. And Allah says, they have no knowledge about that. They're just making assumptions. يَظُنُّونَ فَهِيرُ مِنْ لُغَةِ الْأَغْضَارِ this, this verb and this act is from the language of, you know, it's a kind of an oxymoronic language. But what does it mean here? Here in particular, it means first you have an assumption about somebody. I don't like that guy. I don't know, that guy is kind of... Somebody walks into the masjid, man, that guy doesn't even have a beard. This guy's wearing pants. You know, dressed, you know, dressed like the kuffar. You know, what's wrong with this guy? You just kind of, you look at someone and size them up. You don't make any judgments yet. But you know what, as time progresses, you become absolutely convinced and confident they're all like this. They're all like that. All the Africans are like that. All the Senegalese are like that. All the Nigerians are like that. All the Bangladeshis are like that. All the Turks are like that. I know them all. You don't know those guys, I know. That's fun. You are so convinced. You are so convinced. You're so set in your assumptions. So set in your assumptions. Allah Azza wa says, اِجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا مِنَ اللَّهِ It's not even about other ethnicities, even inside our homes. Even inside our homes, the wife says something to you and you assume she means something bad. The husband says something to the wife and she assumes he's trying to make fun of her. Dinner's really good today, the husband says. Oh, you hate it again, huh? <laughs> I know what you really mean. No, no, I meant it's good. No, I know what you really mean. I know you. That's one. That's one. You're not telepathic. You don't know what the other person means. Give, learn to give benefit of the doubt. One can become so bad in some people that two people are walking by each other. One of them says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The other says, Wa I know what he meant by Assalamu alaikum. He wanted to see if I'd say Wa alaikum assalam because he wants to feel like he's better than me. You know? Why do you say it like that? What do you mean? He just said salam. Yeah, but he said it a certain, he looked at me a certain way. I know what he was doing. There's some of you sitting in the audience. I'm not looking at you. I'm really not. I'm looking over you. What's some of you sitting? Why is he looking at me like that? Why, why is he? Did somebody tell him about me? You know? I've given a khutbah before on a similar topic. It was about speaking nicely. Speaking nicely. Wakulu linasi husnan. That was the entire khutbah was wakulu because we need it. <laughs> we need it. We don't need the entire. We just need that much. Let's start with that because we're pretty bad at that. 
So I gave that khumbah and you know, part of that was not making assumptions. Just be nice to people when you speak to them. Brother comes up to me afterwards and says, who paid you to give this khumbah? Did he tell, me, did he tell you about me? You know? My goodness, you know? This is one. This, you cannot assume that somebody means good for you. You cannot assume that somebody's proposing something to you or giving you some advice, not to one-up you or to crush your pride or to humiliate you, but they actually mean well for you. You see, if one takes over, then we are no longer able to give each other good advice anymore. I can't come to you as a brother and say, look, I'm concerned about this one thing. Because you're gonna, you're gonna have too much of an assumption against me, you won't be able to take my advice. You're gonna think I mean, I have some other agenda. I have some other agenda, you're not gonna be able to take it. And then this one isn't just in our interactions within our family or within a community. This happens between us and the du'at and the ulama of Islam that are speaking. And somebody says, man, don't listen to that guy. That one time he said one thing, and that means he must be evil. He's got an agenda. Look, our ulama are not prophets. Our du'at are not prophets. Everyone after the Rasul of Allah will make a mistake in something they say. They're human beings, you know. Right? So there's, there's always going to be something that a scholar says that it wasn't perfect. Or you don't agree with it. Even though you're not a scholar, but you decide you don't agree with this one thing he said. It doesn't take away from all of the good that they did or they continue to do. You cannot reduce people to one thing that they say. You can't. Imagine if people did that to you and me. Imagine if somebody remembered one thing I said five years ago and therefore nobody should ever listen to me. Because you said it to your friend, and you said something, and you know, we say things. We make more human beings. But to take one thing, and to make the assumption about the character of a person, and completely character assassinate them. And then on top of that, there are people who don't even listen to Islamic like lectures, and read books, and durus. They don't sit in them because they want to benefit. They sit in them waiting for something they can find to attack. I don't write this, does he said that? Oh, he said that? Oh, oh. I mean, they came with one. They came and sat in this thing that they're supposed to get closer to Allah with, but the only intention was, but I'm going to take this part out, I'm going to make a video out of that, then I'm going to write a refutation about this, and I'm going to do this. Oh my God! What is wrong with you? Why don't you have anything better to do? Why, why, this, why so much fun? Why seeking out what somebody else said wrong? We are so busy finding the mistakes in each other, we have no time left to share something good with each other. There's no, is the entire Ummah already familiar with the Book of Allah that we have time to talk about what you said wrong and what I said wrong or what somebody else said wrong? We don't have time for this. It's not, we're not worth the energy. We're not worth the effort. The Word of Allah needs to be spread and we're too busy just confirming our dhunun. That's what we're busy with. This Allah says, Ijdani kathira min al-dhan. But that's not the entirety of my khutbah. This is the last part of it. Inna ba'da dhanni ithm. He says, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. It's ironic that Allah put that. On the first hand, assumptions are things that you originally had doubt and you left it and you became convinced of it. But he says, let me tell you something that in which there is no doubt. After assumption, here's one thing that will definitely come. Ithm will come. And ithm in the Arabic language, is roughly translated as sin. But the Quran uses junah for sin, sayyia for sin, haraj for sin. It uses many words for sin. Dhamb is used for sin. There's so many words that are used for sin. What does ithm specifically mean? It has a few meanings. Did you know old Arab poets, when they talked about gambling, sometimes they use the word ithm instead of al-qimar, which is gambling? They use the word interchangeably. In other words, you're gambling when you make assumptions. You're gambling. You could be right, but you could be wrong. And if there's one thing that's clearly evil in our religion, is gambling. The poet also uses the word ithm, meaning sin, interchangeably with alcohol, with khimar, with wine. يعني شربنا الإثم الشاعر يقول شربنا الإثم بدلا من شربنا الخمر. Instead of saying we drank wine, he says we drank ithm. In other words, making assumptions about people can get so far that you are drunk and you don't think clearly anymore. And you've just gotten, it's like a drunk person looks crazy, and they talk crazy. People whose paranoia goes that far, they just start sounding like they're drunk. Like they're addicted. That's what they start sounding like. Inna ba'da dhanni ithm. Al-ithm bi ma'na jaza' kadhalik. Athamahullah, they say. Ya'ni jaza'ahullah. When ithm also means compensation. 
In other words, it's not just any sin. It is a sin, you will be seeing the price of it. You will pay the price of it, and others will see the consequences of it. It's not just some sin that the angels wrote down, and you never saw what happened, only on, on Judgment Day you will see. No, you will see the evils of it in this dunya too. You will see the evils of making assumptions in this dunya. The brotherhood will be destroyed. Families will be ripped apart because of people just assuming what the other meant. You know? Nations, entire nations will be willing to go to war because of assumption. How many political scandals happen because of assumption? There's a rumor spread that this politician did this. There's no evidence yet, but riots have already started in the streets. People have already started to die. Businesses have already started to be ruined. And it doesn't matter which country. But the fact that based on a rumor, based on a bun, some people died. How serious is this thing? It's not just something that ruins your personal life or a community's life. It can ruin entire countries. It can ruin entire nations. Can you imagine, for example, the wars that we went to based on assumption? Based on the assumption. We sold the assumption that there were weapons of mass destruction, didn't we? Now it's known. It's known now. It's not a hidden thing. How many millions of lives have to be paid for because people buy into assumption? This isn't just advice to Muslims, it's advice to all of humanity. Which is why in the next ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal does not say, Ya ayyuhad ladhina amanu. He says, Ya ayyuhad nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa unsa. People, we made you nations and tribes. We made you into different kinds of ethnicities, different languages, different cultures. So you can get to know one another, not because you make fun of each other. Not so you make assumptions about each other. That wasn't the point to make you different ethnicities. You forgot, you, you didn't realize why I made you like this. Why are we different? You didn't get the point. But that addresses to all of humanity. But before he addressed all of humanity, he said, Ya Why did he say that? What are some of the hiccup in that? And I conclude with this. You know, before addressing all of humanity, he addressed the believers because the Muslims were supposed to be the example of how you don't stereotype, how you don't make fun of other people, how you don't make assumptions, how you have clean communication, how you can give benefit of the doubt, how you don't pass judgment until you have absolute clarity. Until you have clarity, you don't, you reserve your judgment. You reserve your, you don't say anything. I don't enough to, I don't know enough to say. That you should stop there. You should, when you're, somebody asks you an opinion, what do you think about this imam? What do you think about this person? What do you think about it? Well, I don't know enough to say, but I think he's pretty bad. Well, no, no, no. I don't know enough to say, full stop. It's done. I got nothing else to say. I'm going to assume it's a good person. I'm almost sure he's a good, if anything, get li ahikar uzran. Find excuses for your brother. If you don't know enough, just say, look, I don't, I've only heard things which obviously when you hear something and you spread it forward, this is against the teachings of the Prophet So when you say, you know what I heard? And you continue your sentence, you just violated something the Prophet said. When you start thinking, you know what I've heard? Nah, never mind. I didn't hear any, I just, it was somebody else. Change the subject. Don't finish that. That's part of spreading one. And then the, the herd, the herd, the herd goes so far that people just start making all kinds of assumptions. And then start making decisions based on those assumptions. SubhanAllah. We have to become people that see clarity. You know? Until something is absolutely clear. Absolutely clear. You, we don't take a step forward. We never take a step forward. This is in family life. This is in work life. This is in community life. This is even in terms of the news. Sometimes we get things in the news that are outrageous. And we assume that it's true. And an entire machine built on the idea of, you know, selling fear, how can we trust it? There has to be more thorough investigative journalism before we make assumptions about entire people or events. We have to develop a skepticism when in ja'akum fasiqun bina fatabayyan. When a corrupt source comes to, to you with news, then clarify it. You know, when a corrupt source comes to you with news, then don't just listen to it. Fatabayyan, fatathabatu fi qira'a until you're absolutely firm about what it actually is, do not pass judgment. Do not make assumptions. May Allah Azza wa Jalla help us live according to these principles that can make our lives, the lives of our families, 
and the life of our community and the ummah so much better than it is today. May Allah Azza wa help us become those who don't look for flaws in what other people are saying, but rather develop a sincerity towards others, in love towards others. And may Allah Azza wa use the message of this deen not to spread differences among us, but to unite us as a people and bring our hearts closer together. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.